All right, problem six, we have approximately 52% of all recent births were boys. In a simple random sample of 100 recent births, 49 were boys and 51 were girls. Um, so the most, like, the most likely explanation for the difference between the observed results and the expected results in this case is, well, this is just basically um, an example of, you know, sampling variability, you know, the, um, the exact number um, of, of, you know, let's in this case, boys and girls, or the exact proportion in each sample won't exactly, won't always be, you know, what the population proportion is, in this case, 52%. Um, but it'll be close usually, but this is just, again, a result of sampling variability. So the answer is simply B, variability, variability due to sampling. There's seven, each person in a random sample of adults was asked how many DVDs he or she owned. Summary statistics are given below. So we got five number summary, standard deviation, standard error. Which of the following statements is true? So 75% of the adults in the sample own more than 95 DVDs. Well, the median is 50. So since median is a 50% point, it's definitely not going to be A. That wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't even be close. Um, B, 50% of the adults own between 0 and 129.4 DVDs. Um, no, the mean, that's just the mean. 50% um, would be between 0 and 50, actually. So not B. C, is it the distribution? of the number of DVDs owned appears to be approximately symmetric. Okay, so let's look at these values more carefully. So the minimum is zero. The max is 3000, so it doesn't look symmetric at all, just based on that. The median is 50. You can already see it's not gonna be symmetric. Q1 is 30. Q3 is 90. Yeah, it's going to be skewed. Looks skewed to the right, most likely. It's probably going to be very far skewed to the right. So not C. Um, the interquartile range of the number of DVDs owned is 65. So the IQR from Q1 to Q3, so 30 to 95, and that is indeed 65. So the answer is D. For flights from a particular airport in January, there's a 30% chance of a flight being delayed because of icy weather. So if a flight is delayed because of icy weather, there's a 10% chance the flight will also be delayed because of a mechanical problem. If a flight is not delayed because of icy weather, there's a 5% chance that it will be delayed because of a mechanical problem. If one flight is selected at random from the airport in January, what is the probability that the flight selected will have at least one of the two types of delays? Okay, so. When it comes to like probability problems, then when, you know, on your AP exam, you're, you're given maybe a problem, you know, what's kind of like in a paragraph. So it's kind of hard to um, organize or know exactly what probability values you want to be calculating. So I like to use the tree diagram. So start simple. So um, you can either have the delay because of icy weather or it's not gonna have any icy weather. Any icy weather. So there's 30% chance of icy weather. That means there's a 70% chance that it's not gonna be icy weather. Now, if it's icy weather, there could also be a mechanical plant problem. Mechanical problem, so let's call that M, or which, which says there's a 10% chance of also having a mechanical problem. So then that means there's a 90% chance that it won't have any additional problem or won't have another problem there. Now, let's say you, you, you're not, you have no problem at the start. Um, but this says there's a 5% chance that it'll be delayed because of a mechanical problem. So from here, you got a mechanical problem as well, but a probability of 0.05, that means you can have no problem with a 95% chance here. So if you want to find the probability that the flight has at least one of the two types of delays, 
it can have you know at least this or this because it has this this you already have a delay or um this got one now um you can use the probability the probability tree is to multiply those across 0.3 times 0.1 0 0.03, 0 0.3 times 0 0.9, 0 0.27, 0 0.7 times 0 0.05, 0 0.035, and then 0 0.7 times 0 0.95, 0 0.665. Now, um, remember these three possibilities make up at least one type of delay. So you add those three probabilities, or you can simply subtract this from one, but these three add up to 0.335. So the probability that it's gonna have at least one of the two types of delays, at least one, it could have both, will be, be 0.335. Your survey was administered to parents of high school students in a certain state to see if the parents thought that the students' academic needs were being met. To select a sample, the parents were divided into two groups, one group of parents who live in cities with populations of more than 10, or more than 100,000, and the other group of parents who live in cities with populations less than or equal to 100,000. A random sample of 100 parents from each group was taken. Which of the following statements about the 200 parents is true? Okay, so it looks like we've got convenience, stratified, random, clusters, systemic, systematic. Okay, so so we have first, you know, a group or, uh, you know, the parents being divided into two groups and it's according to certain characteristic cities with populations of more than 100,000 and the other one with less than 100,000. So these are the strata because because um this could be a factor in how the um parents may think about the um schools meeting the students' academic needs. So these are strata. So this is gonna be a stratified random sample. So um this is gonna be B. Remember a stratified random sample, you break it, you break the 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 um the random sample into groups um, according to some factor that you think may influence the way they respond to the um, survey in this case. All right, 10, a popular computer game keeps track of the number of games played and the number of games won on that computer. The cards are shuffled before each game, so the outcome of the game is independent from one game to the next and is based on the skill of the player. Let X represent the number of games that have been one out of 100 games. Under which of the following situations would X be a binomial random variable? Okay, so if you remember binomial random variables, they have to meet these four conditions. The has a binomial, you know, either yes or no, the, the, um, the options are, you know, very black and white. Each trial is independent. there's a fixed number of trials and each trial has the same probability of success. So remember the acronym BINS, in case you haven't already. Okay, so all games were played by the same player whose skill improved over the course of 100 games. So it can't be this one because the skill improved, which means that the probability of success is gonna be changing over the 100 games. So not A. A group of five players at different skill levels are allowed to play 20. Again, different skill levels, so they have different probabilities of success. So it's not gonna be B. A group of players of different skill levels are allowed, again, this, this, this different skill level 
doesn't allow for the same probability of success on each trial or in each game. D, two players of equal skill level, okay, played one game for 50 days and their skill level did not change from day to day. Okay, so this would work because it says specifically that their the skill levels are the same and that they did not have, their skill levels did not change from day to day. And um, so the answer would be D.